You know she's going to MSDNC, you know that, right? Right? They need a redhead. They don't have a redhead over there, so they need a redhead. Approaching one little bit of housekeeping. <clears throat> Is it true that you are leaving the White House to work for MSNBC? Is it ethical for you to continue conducting this job while negotiating uh, with the media? Oh! Jen, given the reports, which have now been confirmed by multiple media outlets, how can you continue to be an effective briefer if you do, in fact, have plans to join a media outlet? Oh! I guess the question is, how is it ethical to have these conversations with media outlets while you continue to have a job standing behind that podium? Speaking, is it the policy of this White House to allow, this White House to allow staffers to have discussions, even if indirectly with institutions uh, that impact and affect their jobs and your job here. Oh! Well, the, it is the policy of this White House to ensure that anyone who is having conversations about future employment uh, does so through consultation with the White House Counsel's Office and, by, and ensuring they abide by any ethics and legal requirements. By any ethics and legal requirements. Well, um, I have always gone over and above the stringent ethical and legal requirements of the Biden administration. The stringent ethical and legal requirements of the Biden administration. I have received rigorous ethics counseling, including uh, as it relates to any future uh, employment. Uh, I've complied with all ethics requirements and gone beyond and taken steps to recuse myself from uh, decisions as appropriate. Thank you, Jen. Can you, you said you missed us. That the U.S. <laughs> I, I, I did. Thank you, Jen. You put out a list of all of the million to you, 100 grenade launchers. I mean, although you don't want to say it, that answer to that question is yes. Oh! And so, obviously, you're trying to make this distinction between Offensive well, what we're talking about, let me weapons. finish, let me finish, well, let me we're finish, let me finish my, let me finish my you answer. No, you are, no, I was finishing a point, and then you can respond to my... Okay. Oh! Okay, go ahead. All right, you're making this distinction between offensive and defensive weapons. Anybody that looks at that list of weapons that I just mentioned, they would say, clearly they're offensive. If a Ukrainian military uh, officer or someone who is enlisted has one of these weapons, they can take out a Russian military official of some sort with these weapons. They're offensive in nature. So why not provide more offensive weapons like this to the Ukrainian military? Well, first of all, we are providing a range of rifles, etc. There is a difference between a plane and planes and massive military systems. I think anybody would recognize this. Uh, and what we're talking about, which is giving rifles and pistols to many of them farmers and people living in countrysides to defend themselves. I think there's a difference that most people recognize. Thank you everyone so much. Have a nice day. You the back of the room, I will get to you tomorrow. I'm sorry, it's I have to wrap up. I apologize. Kerfuffle, Jen. The answer is yes. I mean, although you don't want to say it, that answer to that question is yes.